GPT-4, it takes what you prompt it with and just runs with it. From one perspective, it's a tool, a thing you can use to get useful tasks done in language. From another perspective, it's a system that can make dreams, thoughts, ideas flourish in text in front of you. OpenAI made tremendous waves when it launched GPT-4. The next generation AI language model is a noticeable improvement from its predecessor and is capable of so much more. If you know a thing or two about ChatGPT and its alternatives, you're already aware of what this spells for chatbots and artificial intelligence in general. However, for those unaware of language models, or GPT-4 in particular, we have your back. We've scoured OpenAI's blogs and the internet and curated a dedicated guide on GPT-4. So, if you're someone with little to no clue about it, get a cup of coffee and sit down as we tell you all about this AI model. GPT-4. Everything you need to know. What is GPT-4? Put simply, GPT-4 is OpenAI's latest iteration in the company's Large Language Model Systems, or LLM. Language model systems, in general, are systems that try to predict the next word in a sentence and intelligently add their inputs to it. They do that by studying a large dataset that gives them the ability to identify patterns and act upon them. GPT-4 is the newest model in this series and is expected to be a big improvement over the previous gen models like GPT-3 and 3.5. There are some specific things GPT-4 is better at, which we will discuss in depth later. However, a simple point you should understand is that this new model will empower chatbots like ChatGPT and MS Bing to be much more capable in their responses. So you can expect them to give better answers, design more creatively, and perform differently with older and newer ChatGPT prompts. The company, backed by a $10 billion Microsoft investment, and off the back of the success of ChatGPT, says it has spent six months interactively aligning GPT-4 using lessons from an adversarial testing program and from ChatGPT, specifically the way humans interacted with the chatbot. This led to the best ever results on factuality, steerability, and refusing to go outside OpenAI-defined guardrails. All a problem for GPT-3.5, the model on which ChatGPT is built. Work started on GPT-4 two years ago, soon after the launch of GPT. This included rebuilding the deep learning stack and creating a supercomputer from the ground up alongside Microsoft Azure that can manage the workload. GPT-3.5, which powers ChatGPT, was trained on this system as part of a test run, leading to a number of bugs and issues that had to be addressed. The GPT-4 training run was unpredictably stable, OpenAI claimed making it the first large model to have a training performance that could be accurately predicted ahead of time. As we continue to focus on reliable scaling, we aim to hone our methodology to help us predict and prepare for future capabilities, increasingly far in advance, something we view as critical for safety. A company blog post said, GPT-4 is multimodal. If you've used the previous GPT models, you might be aware of its limited ability to just interpret the text to input. However, one of the newest and biggest implementations in the new model is that it is multimodal. This means that GPT-4 is able to accept prompts of both text and images. This translates to the AI not only receiving the image, but actually interpreting and understanding it. This understanding will apply to prompts interspersed with both text and vision inputs. Furthermore, GPT-4's multimodal capability will spread across all sizes and types of images and text, including documents with text and photographs, diagrams, sketched or hand-drawn, or screenshots. GPT-4's output will remain as capable as it would be with just text-only inputs. How is GPT-4 better than GPT-3.5 or GPT-3? Besides its breathtaking multimodal approach, GPT-4 has other areas of improvement where the new model not only outperforms its older brothers. Some of these areas are better understanding nuanced prompts. OpenAI claims that it might be able to actually see the difference between GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 at first glance. However, the former's capabilities come to light when you go into the nitty-gritty. To demonstrate the difference, the new model was pitted against GPT-3.5 in a variety of human-level exams. OpenAI used the most recent publicly available tests and gave the models no specific training for this. The data itself paints a better picture than we could tell you. In all results, GPT-4 came out on top and scored above its former version. While the threshold was barely pushed in some exams, such as SAT, EBRW, there was a tremendous leap in performance in other exams, Uniform Bar Exam, AP Chemistry, and more. OpenAI stated, GPT-4 is also more reliable, creative, and generally able to handle more nuanced instructions when compared to GPT-3.5. This translates to the bot effectively understanding more complex prompts easily. 
exponentially larger word limit. While everyone did love GPT-3 and GPT-3.5, people did wish it could recognize even longer inputs. The introduction of GPT-4 has solved that problem. The new GPT-4 AI language model comes with an astounding 25,000 word input limit, which is significantly large. For context, GPT-3.5 was limited to 8,000 words. This means users will be able to feed the bot much longer input prompts for it to read and then render outputs from. So when GPT-4 finally launches, you can expect to give a much more detailed response and take longer inputs without problems. What this means for the developers out there is that you will be able to feed new APIs and documentation to the chatbot and get help writing code or fixing bugs in existing code more easily. Supports more languages. ChatGPT has predominantly been used by English speakers around the globe. However, GPT-4 takes other languages into consideration. The newest model has demonstrated support for over 26 different languages. This includes the likes of Ukrainian, Korean, Germanic languages, and many more. Where is visual input in GPT-4? One of the most anticipated features in GPT-4 is visual input, which allows ChatGPT Plus to interact with images, not just text. Being able to analyze images would be a huge boon to GPT-4, but the feature has been held back due to mitigation of safety challenges, according to OpenAI CEO Sam Altman. You can get a taste of what visual input can do in Bing Chat which has recently opened up the visual input feature for some users. It can also be tested out using a different application called Mini GPT-4. The open source project was made by some PhD students, and while it's a bit slow to process the images, it demonstrates the kinds of tasks you'll be able to do with visual input once it's officially rolled out to GPT-4 in ChatGPT+. OpenAI has been testing its multimodal version of GPT-4 with image recognition support prior to a planned wide release. However, public access is being curtailed due to concerns about its ability to potentially recognize specific individuals. When OpenAI announced GPT-4 earlier this year, the company highlighted the AI model's multimodal capabilities. This meant that the model could process and generate text and analyze and interpret images, opening up a new dimension of interaction with the AI model. Following the announcement, OpenAI took its image processing abilities a step further in collaboration with a startup called Be My Eyes which is developing an app to describe images to blind users, helping them interpret their surroundings and interact with the world more independently. The New York Times reported the experiences of Jonathan Mosin, a blind user of Be My Eyes from New Zealand. Mosin has enjoyed using the app to identify items in a hotel room, like shampoo dispensers, and accurately interpret social media images. However, Mosin expressed disappointment when the app recently stopped providing facial information displaying a message that faces had been obscured for privacy reasons. An OpenAI policy researcher has confirmed that privacy issues are why the organization has curtailed GPT-4's facial recognition abilities. OpenAI's system is currently capable of identifying public figures, such as those with a Wikipedia page. But OpenAI is concerned that the feature could potentially infringe upon privacy laws in regions like Illinois and Europe, where the use of biometric information requires explicit consent from citizens. Further, OpenAI expressed worry that Be My Eyes could misinterpret or misrepresent aspects of individuals' faces, like gender or emotional state, leading to inappropriate or harmful results. OpenAI claims to navigate these and other safety concerns before GPT-4's image analysis capabilities become widely accessible. The policy researcher mentioned, We very much want this to be a two-way conversation with the public. If what we hear is like, we actually don't want any of it, that's something we're very on board with. Despite these precautions, there have also been instances of GPT-4 making false identifications, underscoring the challenge of making a useful tool that won't give blind users inaccurate information. Meanwhile, Microsoft, a major investor in OpenAI, is testing a limited rollout of the visual analysis tool in its AI-powered Bing chatbot, which is based on GPT-4 technology. Bing Chat has recently been seen on Twitter solving CAPTCHA tests designed to screen out bots which may also delay the wider release of Bing's image processing features. Google also recently introduced image analysis features into its Bard chatbot, which allows users to upload pictures for recognition or processing by Bard. In our test of the feature, it could solve word-based CAPTCHAs, although not perfectly every time. Already, some services such as Roblox use different CAPTCHAs, likely to keep ahead of similar improvements in computer vision. This kind of AI-powered computer vision may come to everyone's devices sooner or later, but it's also clear that companies will need to work out the complications before we can see wide releases with minimal ethical impact. What do you think about all this? Do let us know in the comments section below. And if you want to stay up to date, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell.
Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.